I start work tomorrow in Lincoln, which is about an hour and a half from where I live, which is where I am right now. So I've got my car packed up and I am ready to go start work. Day today it's just kind of an induction day and shadowing so I'm just getting myself up and ready and I'm talking really quietly because I'm in shared accommodation which is kind of like university halls but a bit nicer I ended up getting into bed at about half 12 last night but I had to be up at 6 this morning so oh I'm quite sleepy I've had a coffee and I'm just gonna get on with it so we're going to discuss how to get your room more ready for the weekend and um, the best way of having a for the weekend. So I've just finished my third day of work as a junior doctor and my hair's doing its thing. It's doing that crazy thing where it just starts flicking out to the sides and going wherever it wants. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'll just tell you a bit about what I've been up to and what my job involves. My placement is on the psychiatric unit. The psychiatrists themselves, like the consultants, the high up doctors, actually deal with the mental health of the patients. And I'm more there to doing lots of admin, like scribing in ward round, taking bloods, doing ECGs. So I have like all of these that I have to carry with me every day. So I've got my name stamp, my, I don't know what, why I have this. Um, I've got like three different ID badges. <laughs> I've got a swipe card. I have to carry my stethoscope. Um, I've got this, which is like a panic alarm that I can pull if there's any sort of disturbance or I'm worried about my personal safety. Yeah, I think that's it. And this lanyard is one that if you pull on it, it just breaks apart so that I can't get strangled by a patient, which is always nice. So. Today is the day when all of the medical specialties switch over. So the new junior doctors start, and then everyone who's moving up a year as a doctor moves on to different jobs. We've set up a group WhatsApp group of all the other first year junior doctors, which is called Foundation Year One or F1. So yeah, we've all got a WhatsApp group. There's about 35 of us, I think. Having this WhatsApp group's been kind of a bit of a lifesaver because we've all been able to help each other and like tell each other how to get to certain departments or what to do on this sort of computer system and stuff so that's been really good I had a handover yesterday from the F2 so the girl who's a year above me she kind of told me a few tips and tricks about the ward for when I'm gonna be there on my own scribbled down everything that she told me and I'm hoping that I can remember it all today was kind of challenging I was the only doctor on the ward for 22 patients and I had a lot of jobs to do and in the, in the morning I was in a meeting so it meant that um, I only had the afternoon to get on with the jobs and a lot of the stuff I didn't really know how to do it or what I was meant to be doing or whether it was even within my remit so I was having to check a lot of stuff and my main thoughts were that I wanted to be thorough and I wanted to do things properly and you have to document everything. So I wrote myself a big list and I tried to prioritise the jobs. So I think that worked quite well and hopefully I'll streamline that process a little bit more once I'm more experienced. The nurses were so lovely and so helpful. There was a lot that I didn't know how to do or where things were kept and stuff. And they were just looking after me really well and get, helping me out wherever they could. There were points in the day where I was kind of stressed and I was thinking, how on earth am I going to get all of this done? And actually, I did stay late to write up all the notes and make sure I got all the documentation right. My highlight of the day was a patient saying to me, how long has it been since you noticed you had an extremely pointy chin? <laughs> and I just did not know what to say to that. Um, and then he went on to explain about how he's an extremely rare form of cat. So psychiatry isn't all bad. It was quite fun. He was in good spirits and we had a bit of a laugh. So I've just arrived home from my final day of my first week of um, being a doctor. And I've got to say, it's been, it's been such hard work and 
it's tiring and it's draining but it's been amazing and I'm so I feel like it in the space of a week I have learned so much. Being the only doctor on the ward, which I have been for the majority of the week, has been really tiring. My consultant was saying that most of the time there are three doctors covering the ward in the day. So to be the one covering it on my own for the majority of the time has oh, it's been exhausting because I've had to find out everything for myself, which I'm happy to do. Um, but every small decision I'm questioning myself and I I desperately want to make sure I'm doing the right thing for the patients and I, I don't want to give any of them treatment that they don't need or not treat something that I've missed. One of the things that I think is the biggest challenge is learning how to prioritise different tasks. What I'm finding is that I'll be doing one task and the nurses will come and ask me to do something that they consider urgent. It is urgent because it's it's important for that patient, but they probably don't realise the other things that I'm doing. So I'm finding it quite hard to sort of juggle the priority of the tasks and kind of work out the order in which I should do everything. But it's been kind of interesting to prescribe medications. Um, it's something that we've practised a lot during medical school, and I've already made one mistake which I've obviously felt really bad about so I had to prescribe an inhaler for a patient and I know this isn't I shouldn't really give an excuse for making a mistake because it's my job to be meticulous but I got interrupted as I was prescribing the dose and I got the dose wrong and then I didn't notice the mistake and I moved on so when the pharmacist came and told me I'd done that, I felt really bad and I'm, I'm really going to make an effort to be a lot more meticulous and stringent with checking everything I do because constant interruptions are going to happen. So I need to learn to still be a safe and effective doctor at the same time as being interrupted. I just had one of those moments today where I kind of realised how lucky I am that I have everything that I have in my life. We have a patient on the ward who, he's 18 years old, so he's barely an adult, and he's homeless, and I had to assess him today, and he was such a sweet, sweet boy. He was so polite and so lovely, and as he left the clinic room, um, I noticed that he was like pulling his t-shirt down and trying to stretch it because it didn't quite fit right. Um, and I noticed that his trousers were quite scruffy and dirty and so were his shoes. And I just asked him, um, do you have any other clothes with you? Because it suddenly struck me that if he's homeless, is this all he has? And he I could tell he felt so ashamed and he just kind of really sheepishly said yeah this is this is these are my clothes um oh it's making me feel really sad just thinking about it <sighs> um yeah so he said this is um these are all the clothes I have and I don't I don't have anything oh god yeah this is so sad. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. Oh. Yeah, so he said this is this is everything I have. And my heart just oh I felt so sorry for him. I just thought it kind of put everything into perspective for me. It made me think, gosh, when I have bad days, my bad days are I'm a little bit tired or or things haven't gone my way and here's someone who literally has nothing and he's still trying to make the most of life. <sighs> so I asked the ward staff if there are any cl like spare clothes patients can change into because um, obviously people on psych wards are there for weeks and sometimes months. They said they used to have a stock but they don't anymore. Um, 
So I have just texted all of my friends and family and asked them if anyone has any spare casual clothes that are in good condition to please let me have them so I can pass them on to the ward because it's the smallest thing I can do that I think will make a big difference to people when they come in onto a psychiatric ward and literally have nothing. <sighs> That's not my job as a doctor. And I hope I'm not overstepping the mark, but if I can do that, I feel like I'm doing something a bit worthwhile. This is like the least glamorous video I have done and I'm sorry that this whole video has been filled with me looking tired and, and me crying. <laughs> so... Yeah, in summary, <laughs> I feel like I'm getting more confident and I'm getting used to having to just figure things out for myself. I'm really looking forward to the next few months of uh, work on the psychiatric ward and I'm excited to see what this whole year as my as a junior doctor brings me. You guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate you listening to my rambling if you've got this far and I would really appreciate it if you could give a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. I would love to hear your suggestions for future videos. So if there's anything you would like to me to film about or you would like to hear about, then please let me know in the comments. Over and out.